What's going on guys? Welcome. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to edit with DaVinci Resolve completely for free. What's going on people? My name is Jack. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel for the first ever time. In which case, if you're interested in video editing, videography, or how to make money making videos, subscribe because that is the topics that I cover here on the channel, all around video production themed channel. It's your first time here. Subscribe. You will not regret it. Now, on screen right now is a whole bunch of nonsense. My bad. I, I guess I clicked to the wrong uh, folder. <laughs> God damn it. Um, let me pull up the example sequence of what I'm going to be showing you how to edit today. So this is going to be it right here. Um, essentially, it's just going to be a nice sequence with a few different clips and some kind of light leaks to tie them in together. Light leak overlays obviously acting as transitions and you can create a nice little you know clip like that. Like uh, there was no replay on it, unfortunately, but we'll replay it one more time. You know, just some clips of me flying my drone and, um, you know, my friend Noah basically recorded these clips of us on the hilltop or whatever. And, uh, you know, then this is me chasing my friend Noah with the drone. So we're going to combine all these clips, these five clips, pop some light leaks in between them to create a seamless sequence. This is the type of editing that I really like stuff that's not, you know, heavy on the effects, but more just kind of using little subtle effects like the light leaks to tie things together. Now, to make this as interactive as possible, you guys can go to the description and download for free the Clips and Light Leaks Pack, which will essentially give you guys um, a drone shot and, um, you know, all these clips of me and then also all the light leaks and we can follow through entirely. And we're going to be re replicating this, basically just completely replicating it, all right? So this is what it's going to look like in the actual editor once we've completed. Oops, it started from the beginning. I mean, it started from halfway through. Um, come on, man. What are you doing? Let's give this a play. Boom. So, you know, we're basically just making a nice, seamless, different, uh, you know, sequence that's going on with me flying my drone, which ends with a pretty nice clip of, you know, the drone chasing after my friend Noah via the follow focus kind of, um, or the, uh, the, the track feature. But let's do it. Let's, let's scrap this project, new project up there at the top. For any new users, I'm going to try go a little bit slower, actually. So let me stop myself. Go up to file, press new project if you want to make yourself a new project. Now I'm going to call this new project um, version... <laughs> Version two of the version two of the drone clip edit. A very, very obvious sort of like straightforward name. Um, but that's what we're gonna do now. Now what I want to do is open up this folder, and let's actually just import all of the actual clips themselves first. So it's all let's import all the actual clips. None of the light leaks yet. Let's drag them over here, which it'll say no clips in media pool blanked out a bit here, obviously because that's our media pool and there's no clips. So we just drag and drop change uh, the frame rate and settings are different. Yes, these are 4K clips, so I'm gonna press change and let it adjust the, the, the settings of the project. And then I'm gonna start with my first clip. So uh, F, you see there's numbers here, P1077454. The last numbers are what you wanna look at. So 454, 455, 461, 462, uh, and then that's different format, so it's different numbers. But let's start with the, with the lowest number, which is the 54. And actually, if I delete that, I wanna just double click that clip. So it opens it up here in our source preview. And what we can do is take our um, sort of little scrubby wheel dial thing, for lack of a better uh, word, and just go ahead and press play on the clip. And let's just find where a nice bit of movement happens. And let's actually press it in from that point. Um, and I just wanna set an out point. Um, an in and an out point. So what I want to do is go here where a nice bit of movement starts, where I'll probably go about there, and just press I. And when, you, when we press I, you see it adjusts to this little thing here, and then we can press play, and it will actually start from that. And what I means is in. And in means now when we drag this clip to our sequence, it will start from the point where we press I and not from the very beginning, which, uh, you know, basically is just a quicker method of cutting stuff without actually having to cut it. Now, what I want to do is leave it playing for about two seconds, and then I want to actually go up here to our razor tool, which is blade edit mode, which you can actually use the shortcut for B. So if you look at this, the, um, you know, arrow tool is selected currently, but if we just press B on our keyboard, the one selected is now the blade tool. Again, if we press um, hover over this, it says to go to selection mode, the shortcut is A. So now if you watch these again, if we press A, it jumps to selection mode, which is our all-purpose kind of tool to move stuff around and everything. And if we press B, it's going to jump to our razor tool. So if you're completely confused on what I'm doing by cutting clips, it is because I have used the shortcut B and not actually physically gone up here and tap the tool, which is obviously going to save you a lot of time. So let's start in our tool of A and let's just go ahead and press B and watch it jump to that. And then let's go here, tap it, press A again to switch to our all selection tool and delete this. So we've created a two second selection of that 
selection. <laughs> double selection. It's a selection of a selection. Then let's double click the 455, which is the next clip along. And this is me from another angle, obviously. And we're just going to press play and we're going to wait for a nice movement to happen just like it did before. And that is it right there. So as soon as a nice movement starts happening, we press I, which makes it the in point, which means the clip's going to start from there. And this is a really nice one because this actually starts next to my face and it kind of reveals the sun behind, which when we actually do a little bit uh, more in depth with the color grading in a second, which DaVinci is very well known for, we'll be able to amplify that even further. So let's now drag that down here, which will start at our endpoint, and it's going to reveal the sun. Um, and I think what I might do actually is just go along a little bit and just press B right there just to make it a little bit, a little bit quicker of a selection. Um, and we can actually let that play right there. Boom. And again, I just want to make all these clips four seconds, okay? So we're making a nice quick four second sequence. Again, I'm pressing B to jump here to my blade tool and I'm chopping. And B is a very easy one, think about it. It's called blade tool. So B is the shortcut. Um, <laughs> on, on other tools, it's called, on other programs, it's called the scissor tool. So it might be S, it might be called the cut tool. So it might be C. It's usually a letter that, uh, you know, correlates to the name of it so that it's obviously easier. They're not trying to make it hard for you guys. You know what I mean? So boom, we have uh, actually selected two clips here. And now let's go jump over to this one here and let's bring it over here. And I think this one actually might be not shot in slow motion. So we're going to have some audio attached to it, which means we're going to have to mute the layer um, to make it correlate with the other ones, but let's play it. So what I want to do here is actually wait until you see my head goes up and then the camera starts moving up. So I want to actually go to when the, when the camera movement starts and press I. And now if we play it, it's going to come up to me right there. We can drag that in and again, play it for a further two seconds, get it to the six second mark, which again, uh, for, this, for the seconds, I'm looking over here, right? So this particular um, time stamp here, if we start it and we play, we notice that it is uh, going over to six seconds. And uh, the way I'm going over one frame by another to get it perfect is via the arrow keys. So I'm just trying to explain every part of the process. Most people who know how to use you know programs, they're, they're, they're going to know this stuff. But for the one person that doesn't, who is going to make a fuss, I got to emphasize how I'm doing everything. Believe me, I know the, the hard way. Again, B to jump over there, A to jump back to our all selection tool and delete that right there. Then we can actually go um, and actually just give it one more play. So we see what it's, what it's looking like so far. And uh, do not be off put if it's a little bit laggy over here in the preview window. I have a 2000 pound computer next to me that I bought six months ago. And you know, even I get a little bit of lag preview, uh, a preview lag. That's just what happens, especially when using 4K footage like we're, like we're using right now. But um, if you hear that, the audio is actually being picked up. So let's actually just go ahead and press M on the entire sequence. And, uh, and, and I just mute this right here, okay? But that's me looking up right there. And now we can actually go ahead and take the final shot, which will be 62. And uh, we'll actually double click that. Um, bring it to the beginning again, because it looks like it started a little bit weird. And let's just keep moving it along and see when a, uh, a kind of nice bit emerges. So it's looking like that's pretty nice right there. Um, what I might do is I might just start it where I start looking down, okay? So I know that seems a little bit weird, but um, I don't want any new movements to be introduced. So I want the whole sequence to be one kind of steady movement, which it was right there. No kind of moving up and then my face moves down, if that makes sense to you. That might be my OCD kind of playing up, but <laughs> either way, that's how I'm doing it. And now I can actually play this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this on for a little bit longer, probably three seconds instead of two. So I'm gonna leave it going until nine seconds. Again, B to chop it. Boom, cut it down, and let's actually go ahead and double tap this final clip here. And this is going to be our drone shot, which we can, again, just keep playing it in our source preview until it actually opens up. And let's actually start it right there, because you see the natural sun, uh, the natural lens flare is coming in from the sun, which means if we add that with our artificial light leak, we're going to get an even nicer effect. So again, let's drag that over. Don't be off put. The drone clips never have audio. So um, that's why there's no audio layer there. And let's just keep that playing till um, the 14 second mark. And at the 14 second mark, we can again, press B to get to our blade tool, chop that one right down the middle and go over here and delete it. Now let's press control S. Control S is going to bring us up our save. Now it's a, uh, you know, kind of frozen for a second there, but it's fine. Let's bring back open our clips. Okay. So, you know, I'm back over on my clips right now. Uh, the folder that you guys will have downloaded and extracted if you're following through with me and let's bring in our light leaks. So light leak one, light leak three, light leak eight and light leak 18. 
bring them over to DaVinci. Again, drag and drop them into our media pool. And let's start with, um, you know, let's just start ticking down the list. So I'm actually going to start probably with number 18. Um, I think that's the one I started with. I'm not entirely sure. And the way you want to do these is go here um, to your plus, zoom into your sequence a little bit, and with your arrow keys on your keyboard, just start going over frame by frame until you see the frame where the light is most in the middle. So you see here, after that point, it starts going down. That right there is like the most in the middle bit. Then we want to go over here to inspector. So top right inspector, which is going to give us further details and further kind of customizations of the clip. Go here to composition mode, scroll to the bottom and press screen. S-C-R-E-E-N, screen. That's going to make it see through. Then let's press B, chop a cut right there, press A, highlight that and drag it over until the middle point is in between the two clips, which is going to create a kind of transition effect between the two of them. And just like that, we have actually done it. However, there is only one thing that I'm that, that, that I'm considering, and that is the fact that it does look a little bit harsh. So what you can do to even it out is go over to the exact end of each clip and just drag it in a little bit. This little guy right here, that will create a kind of um, sort of opacity um, fade out type of effect, opposed to it just being super you know, strong and on the screen and you could drag that all the way over um, to kind of have a full blown fade effect. But that right there even looks like it needs it a little bit less. So um, feel free to find, you know, the, uh, the right balance for yourself. But now I'm just going to proceed to go through and just pop all these in. Um, and some of the middle bits are a little bit before, some are a little bit behind. So for that, that would probably be the, uh, the kind of most um, on the screen part of it. Again, screen it, add that cut right there, go over here, and then we can actually you know, see how nice that one looks right there. Especially that one definitely needs a bit of a fade though, you could tell. Um, and I think almost the second part of most of these is gonna want a fade. But then again, we can keep going over. So that right there is definitely the, the, the most exposed bit. Screen it, um, go here, add the cut, highlight everything, drag it over, and it is uh, looking nice. That one especially is really nice. In fact, I might swap these around to put them in the correct order that they were before, because I think they looked a little bit better in the original order that they were in. But um, that one's been used lightly. Oh, oops. Um, let's, uh, let's get rid of it. Just undoing it. Lightly one. Okay, bring these over. Wow. Okay, so that's definitely the middle point. Um, and now let's uh, scroll down, screen, and add the cut right there. Drag it over. And um, now, actually, if, if, I, uh, if I drag these around a little bit, because I'm pretty sure this one here, um, this one was right here. Oops. Um, I'm just highlighting it and dragging it over. Boom. Highlighting this one and dragging it over here. And now if I give this a play from the beginning, we should have achieved creating a pretty smooth sequence um, just off the back of these light leak transitions and, of course, the nice clips themselves. Now, this is looking very, very nice. There's only one final thing. DaVinci is, is known for its color grading, so we got to do some sort of grade. I'm actually going to specifically focus on the curve tool for this one right here. So let's go over to color. The curve tool is going to be the number one one that pops up, but these are the kind of ones you can go through if you want, but we're going to be staying over on the curve tool. And I just want to do a basic grade, okay? And the basic grade is just going to be a basic S, if you could even call it an, uh, call it an S. Well, let's have a look what my S is going to be. I'm pretty much going to go here to this point here, okay? Um, now press Control-Z to undo it anytime if you feel as though you messed up. And I'm just going to pull it down a bit. And that's going to emphasize the darks. And again, if we undo, you see it gets a lot more light and a lot more flat. If we pull it down, we're emphasizing the blacks. And then let's go up here to this bad boy here. And we just pull it over a little bit, not much, and emphasize the whites as well. Now, I might have to pull that back, actually. And on this particular clip, I might actually just emphasize the, uh, the blacks. Because the whites already are pretty emphasized. Um, you know, you, you could tell via my face. So I'm actually just going to work my way through. I'm going to go to the next clip right now. And I'm actually going to pull it down as well and pull this out a little bit, which is going to emphasize those whites, emphasize those darks. And again, go to the next one. Um, and you can just keep working through your sequences. We could even, you know, grade the, the overlays, but I'm not feeling like grading the overlay. I think they're all good. And again, just bring it down and bring it over, which is creating sort of an S. Okay. So right here, you know, a little bit is, is, is more, less is more in this situation, but, um, you know, sometimes you can get a real S curve going on and that's what this is called. It's called S curve strategy, but we're just going to keep on pulling these down. This one, again, there's a lot of light coming in from there, so we don't want to kind of overexpose it. 
This final clip right here, this is a different camera, so we wanna do a, a slight variation, to be honest. Um, oof, okay, that's, that's looking pretty cool right there, isn't it? Cool, very, very cool indeed. And um, actually, when we keep bringing it over, keep bringing it over, having a look, just kind of a final review. Um, and that's in the color tab down here. We can then jump back over to the edit tab and actually scroll all the way over here to the end, actually press O, which is gonna be an out point. Um, and in fact, what we can do now is scroll to the beginning, press Control S, Command S if you're on Mac, zoom out a little bit of our sequence, and now we can press play. And this is actually going to uh, you know, show us our, our finished sequence, which is looking pretty nicely graded and of course, very nicely synced up via those light leaks. And um, overall, I think we've created a really nice sequence. So if we wanted to actually take this sequence now, let's go down here to deliver. Very, very, very obvious kind of thing, bottom right, press deliver. And then let's actually go over here um, and uh, you know things will be set up via the um, you know dimensions of the actual project itself. But let's just save this as um, drone sequence two. Drone sequence two. Bring it over here, bring it over here. And um, the location, let's actually just set that to my record drive, which is the exact place that we had the other thing. Or in fact, we'll set it to the YouTube thing. Press add to render queue, come over here, it'll appear. We can review it and then press start render and the render shouldn't take very long. As you can see, it's gonna be very quick indeed. Now we can actually watch this in a second. Two secs, let me check that my, my camera's not about to stop recording. Um, it, it almost certainly is in about five minutes. For some reason, my, well, not for some reason, my camera does have a 25 minute record limit um, because it's not a full blown film camera, but that should be enough to finish off. So let's actually open this one up right now. Boom, pull this actually over a bit so you guys can see it fully. And um, this right here is our sequence, which we have made together. In fact, we've popped all these clips together and um, then we have, uh, you know, synced them together via the, uh, the light leak transition. And um, overall, it's looking very, very cool. Very nice hilltop clips. And uh, the stuff is looking very nice indeed. One final watch. That looks like a tiny bit of a glitch right there, doesn't it? Look at this. So there's a little bit of a glitch right there. I guess that's a render problem. I'm not too sure. That might be, might be something to do with the color grade or it might be something to do with the light leak. I'm not too sure. That definitely wasn't on there in version one. But that right there is it, guys. Really hope you've enjoyed following through with me to create a very cool sequence in DaVinci Resolve using the light leaks. I like you know seamlessness like this. Like over-edited sequences are cool, but nice seamless sequences, in my opinion, is a style that I really like. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's nicer to me. But thank you guys for watching the video. I've been Jack or is Jack Cole. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if this is your first video of mine and you're new. I produce weekly content, daily content even based around video production, video editing, videography, and how to make money making videos. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, and I'll hopefully see you in an upcoming video. Take it easy.